Hi everyone, I'm Zena, founder and master tea blender at clubmagichour.com. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble a tea ceremony tray to elevate your everyday tea time into a sanctuary. The other day I was meditating and I was meditating on what tea truly means to me and uh, the mantra popped in or the, or the phrase popped into mind, uh, tea is sanctuary. And in a busy world and in a home where you might have been cooped up for the last year or, you know, we're all getting back out into the world now, we need to remember that intention is everything. And creating sacred ceremonies around uh, self-care and tea time is a beautiful ritual you can do for yourself every day. Whether you have five minutes or an hour, it, it is going to absolutely change your life. And so I'm going to show you how I assemble my tea trays. And this is another thing you can do with this is you could assemble a tea tray and serve your mom if it's around Mother's Day or serve your mate or serve your child. It's a wonderful, beautiful way to show someone you love and care for them. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, so I have a few things here, um, and I sometimes like to start with, I'll add a scarf or a tea towel to the bottom of my tea tray. This tea tray was um, cb2.com. Um, I should, really should talk to them about an affiliate account because I love all their stuff and I put them in all my videos. Anyway, this is from there, CB2. You can um, go to a local housewares or you can find these at thrift stores, antique stores. Any type of tray will do as long as uh, you love it. And I love this white one because it's like a clean slate, El Tabla Rasa. It, um, it's, it's a palette that you can put any color or any mood onto. Okay, so I'm going to use this gorgeous uh, Johnny Wes scarf. And basically, I'm just gonna lay it like that where the tassels are going over the edge. And it'll have a little bit of motion. I'm not a perfectionist. If you've seen any of my videos, other than tea formulas, I'm kind of sloppy <laughs> and clumsy. So anyway, so this is um, the, the scarf um, or the tea um, towel that you're going to use. You're gonna wanna make sure that you can stain it because like me, you know, you might be sloppy, a little sloppy. Okay, right, John? A little sloppy. Okay, so um, then, let's see, I put this together, okay. So what I really like to do is I like to start with a bud vase. In tea ceremony, a flower is, uh, is sacred, and so um, having a very mindful little, I, I got these out of my yard. So I got some, um, the last of the seasonal jasmine, and I have lots and lots and lots of lavender in my, in my wild yard. So I'm just gonna add some lavender sprigs, and then I'm going to add some rosemary. I'm, a, I'm an aromatherapist, you might not know that about me, and so any time you open one of our teas, you will find that the scent is really um, sort of a main focal point. I love to make tea that smells like heaven, and I use essential oils. So having a little simple flower arrangement that um, is the scent of, of the garden or the scent is really, in my opinion, the scent of heaven. And actually, jasmine is considered the scent of God. So, in many cultures. Okay, so, and this is an old teapot. These also make great little little um, vases if you need. And this is an old one from my first tea company called Zena's, Zena's Tea, so, okay. So then what I do is I boil the water. So I've got the water already boiled and I look around and I think about what kind of cups do I want? What kind of uh, you know, accoutrement do I want? What do I want to experience or what do I want uh, my loved one to experience? And so um, sometimes I'll go with these little vintage cups. I got these at Anthropology years and years ago. I buy little dessert plates and you can get vintage ones at thrift stores or antique stores. And I like to, I like to have a little dessert plate um, as my saucer. And um, because I'm not gonna use this cup this time, I'm actually gonna use a more is more big girl cup. Uh, and we sell these on the website. And I really like the way these look 
on these little plates. And so um, then I'm going to, but if, if you don't want them to drink a bowl of tea, like, you know, I do, you can um, also choose smaller cups like that. So then I'm going to pick my teapot and I was thinking um, I would pick this one, even though that cup is way, that cup's out of control. So I'm now gonna remove this and use this instead a little bit more proportionate to that beautiful teapot. So it really depends on what your style is and, and throw everything at it. You know, whatever you want to experience or share with someone else for their experience, if you want them to experience color or, or um, stardust or whatever it is that you are wanting to infuse into this simple ritual for yourself or someone you love, you can do it. So then I'm gonna choose the tea. The most important part, obviously, of a tea ceremony and creating a, a sanctuary uh, moment is to choose the tea that uh, infuses people um, or yourself with what you want to experience. And we're very intentional when I formulate each tea. I formulate them with Reiki and a prayer. They're all organic. and. I am thinking today uh, I'm going to use the Happy Heart Tea. It's a Moringa almond matcha that's divine. And I'm feeling like with Mother's Day coming up and with everything everybody's been through in the last year, I'm thinking a little bit of heart nourishment would be great. So this is the chakra collection of Magic Hour and I created each of the blends to open and energize uh, that part of your body and your energetic body. And, and so Happy Heart is the uh, heart chakra tea. And so this looks like a very heart-centered tea ceremony. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna use a Midas Touch strainer. Uh, these are my favorite strainers. We sell these on the website. And then I'm going to measure a little, a, a teapot full. And a teapot this size is two teaspoons. So it's one teaspoon per uh, cup of tea. And so um, then you can add that to your tea ceremony. And just, cause it makes it beautiful. Here, I'll add it this way. Okay. And then as the tea is steeping, oh, see, I already spilled. <laughs> I didn't, I can't even get the kettle to the I think people probably think I'm really clumsy. I don't know. Let's just say I didn't do well in dance class. I played softball and I was the catcher. My nickname was Boomer. True story. I was also an all-star almost every year, but I sat the bench every year, every season in all-stars. Finally, I asked my coaches what why they picked me for all-stars if I was never going to play. And they said it was because I had a great attitude and I motivated everybody else. Then they gave me five bucks to go play at Chuck E. Cheese. All right. So now we're going to add a couple little ritual items. So I am going to add pyrite. Um, and so you can just like find magical things from nature. You can find a stone, a feather, a, uh, a seashell, anything, and you can just add it to your little altar next to the flowers. And then um, incense, uh, incense might be a little dangerous with the fabric this time, but um, if, depending on what you wanna experience, uh, this one is Hope, and I really love this scent, and we sell these as well. This is Japanese, totally natural, essential oil-based incense. So it's clean, there's no carcinogens in it. You know, you have to really be careful about the candles you burn. Uh, with lead wicks and artificial, um, you know, paraffin in the wax, Ugh. you and also with your incense. Oh, I forgot all that talk. I forgot to get a piece of incense out. Okay, so and you'll notice too, I picked hope, and it's the color of the lavender. So I'm going to set that there, and I'm going to use another little dessert uh, plate, and you can use anything. And then I'm going to put the incense there. Okay, so now. You can decide uh, if you are a cream person or a sweetener person, you can use honey, you can use coconut sugar, you can use monk fruit, you can use stevia. And um, I, and also you can um, use creamer. You can see why you don't wanna put packaging on your um, tea tray. So I always use a little pitcher. So you can use a little milk pitcher. This is keto creamer. It is really good and really decadent. Okay, so a little bit of creamer I'm gonna add here. And then I would say, what should we do next? We will take the tea out, it's done steeping. 
and it's a gorgeous color green because your heart chakra is the color green. Isn't that cool? This, your emerald, emerald heart. Okay. All right, and now we are almost ready. I'm actually going to use um, a little bit of coconut sugar and um, I'm just using little cups, little trays and put that there. And then let's see, another thing you can do is add a journal and pick a pretty pen. This is just a default pen um, and you can add a little journal to write your, your dreams and a little pen. And then if you want, you can add a cup of tea. <laughs> I mean, life by the cup. <laughs> I mean, my book, I'm trying to pitch my book. Anyway, this is my first book called Life by the Cup and it is uh, kind of awesome because it's how I started my first tea company and it's an adventure and it's uh, meant to inspire you to show you you can do anything. Because when I started my first tea company, I had $6 to my name and soon enough, we were in 22,000 stores and we had really helped uh, launch fair trade into the grocery uh, world. So uh, this is the story of how I did it and it makes you believe you can do anything too because you can. Because not only are you stardust, you're amazing. And when you drink tea, you're more amazing. All right, so we can put that there. Actually, that's too much. All right, I already got the pitch in, so it's fine. Okay, so this is our sacred tea ceremony tray. Look how pretty that is. Can you see it, John? Yes. Okay. So then as you, um, as you light your incense and you sort of settle in and, and get comfortable, what I like to do is um, if you're serving this to someone else, you know, you take it to them and you pour them the first cup and you can always do this with two cups. My husband and I have been doing this for a lot of years and we call it our magic hour. That's what happened and then magic hour was born. So uh, you can sit and gaze at the flowers, take in the aromas, settle into your senses. And I like to take three heart breaths when I start my ceremony. In the first heart breath, I like to fill my cup with the green energy of my heart chakra and exhale. And with my second breath, I like to fill the space around me with that green, wonderful energy and exhale. And with the third breath, I try to fill the house, the neighborhood. I try to reach the moon with my heart energy. The heart is the true intelligence of the body and of existence. It's where the soul lives. And exhale. And then I ask myself the five sensory questions. What do I see? And I look around and I look at the beauty I was able to create for either myself or, or someone I loved. And then I ask myself, what do I hear? And I listen. And hearing and listening are different. Listening is intentional. Hearing is not intentional, right? And then I ask myself, what do I feel? I settle into the body. Then I ask myself, what do I smell? Yum. It's like a macadamia, hazelnut, almond extravaganza. And then I ask myself, what do I taste? What do I taste? And then I just ensure that the space is quiet and that uh, everything is very intentional. And this is basically a sanctuary. And look, you didn't even need a room of your own. You didn't need to go on some expensive retreat. You didn't need to go to Esalen. You didn't need to go anywhere. All you did was, was become present to the small little two by three tray. And you honed your attention and you got into your senses and you made something beautiful. And you can do this every single day because tea is a sanctuary. And no matter where you are, even if you're using a to-go mug and you're in the car, you can ask yourself the sensory questions as you're driving to work or taking the kids to school, center into your body, become present. Because as my teacher says, when you're present, you experience heaven on earth. And that is the trick to tea. Okay, so now you know all my secrets. You know I was a softball all-star. You know uh, I never played in the all-stars. <laughs> and you know I love flowers and tea and I'm the creator of Magic Hour and I wrote a book 
and that's it. You know everything about me. And that's the other thing with tea. When you share something like this with somebody, it's a moment to connect. And our mission is to connect people through tea ceremony. And so you can connect by telling them something about you, something meaningful for you, uh, talking about a dream. All I ask is if you're doing tea ceremony with someone, no logistics. You don't want to talk about minutia. You want to be talking about magic, things that are timeless, things that are infinite, things that are exciting for you. Okay. All right. So that is a magic hour ritual on a tray. And you can do that every single day. And I hope that you will uh, take this practice and, uh, and make it part of your life. It really does make a big difference. So once again, I'm Zena. I'm the founder at clubmagichour.com and I hope to see you soon. Cheers. Thank you.